The problem that the NRC has known about is that the violence of water jetting out the broken ends of the pipe scours paint off walls, coating insulation off piping, and any other loose material in the way and carries it down into the basement where it clogs the screens just like here in a bathtub drain and the water stays in the tub, pulls out through the broken pipe, ends back up in the basement and you just recycle that water to, re to cool the reactor. The problem that the NRC has known about is that the violence of water jetting out the broken ends of the pipe scours paint off walls, coating insulation off piping, and any other loose material in the way and carries it down into the basement where it clogs the screens just like here in a bathtub drain and the water stays in the tub instead of getting to the pumps. The NRC knows about that since they warned President Carter in 1978. This is an NRC study of what's the chances of this happening at the 69 pressurized water reactors in the United States. The red boxes according to the Sandia National Lab, is very likely to cause a reactor meltdown at U.S. reactors. I'll speed this up a sec. A mere 53 of the 69 reactors are very likely to have this meltdown if there's an accident. 53 out of 69 since 1978. The good news is that the NRC has asked plant owners to fix this problem, giving a toaster oven to the first one who did it which turned out to be Davis Bessie for other reasons. But many of the reactors are now fixed. They've put larger screens inside the containment so it takes more debris to clog it. At the same time, they've replaced the paint and the coatings and other materials inside containment to make it less susceptible to be broken up and carried down into the containment. So they, those reactors that have fixed the problem have really lessened the likelihood that that problem exists. However, there are 20 reactors that have said, just said no. Followed Nancy Reagan's edict and just said no. And the NRC has said, please? And this NRC, yeah, no, sorry. We're trying to get the NRC to get those 20 reactors to fix this problem that many other reactors have fixed and hoping in the meantime that this doesn't happen at the plant in your backyard because it's very likely that it won't work. But that's only if it fails. Earlier than President Carter being warned, there was a fire at the Browns Ferry plant in Alabama that was owned and operated by the Tennessee Valley Authority. A worker using a candle to look for air leaks started a fire, as candles have been known to do. Mrs. O'Leary's cow has an alibi, but the worker using a candle to look for air leaks started a fire that was in the room just below the control room. All the cables from the control room passed through this room right below the control room and then went out to various equipment in the plant. So the plant had all of its electricity, but all the cables between the controls in the control room and the equipment in the field was lost. Unit 1 at Browns Ferry lost all of its emergency equipment. The fire damaged all the cables. Unit 2 lost most of the safety systems due to the fire. So the NRC said, we don't, this is too close. They adopted rules in May of 1980 to prevent the next Browns Ferry. This is the NRC's list of plants that don't meet those regulations and don't meet an alternative set of regulations that the NRC adopted in 2004, saying, could you please meet one of the set of regulations? Just say no. Fifty reactors in the United States, roughly half the fleet, are not protected in case of a fire for regulations that were adopted three decades ago. NRC in action. And ironically, one of the plants that doesn't meet the regulations is Browns Ferry in Alabama that started it all. Has absolutely no excuse, but they don't meet it. Doesn't need to explain, but roughly, ten, roughly a decade ago, nine, we suffered 9-11. The NRC after 9-11 imposed security requirements for plants to meet to make their plants less vulnerable to acts of malice. Today, the NRC knows that there are several plants that don't meet those regulations. Their owners have said, can we have more time? Apparently, we're waiting for terrorists to retire, is our new safety protection system. I just assume that we actually, if, there, if we identify security shortcomings, we go out there and fix them. We don't put them on a list and ask and beg and co you know, coax the plant owners to meet the safety security regulations. It'd be nice if the NRC enforced its own regulations.
NRC in action. Ernie and I were going to talk about some of the things that have been done at other places to try to address some of these issues. About 12 years ago, the NRC appointed me to a Federal Advisory Committee Act panel. That's a, an advisory bo body legally chartered to look at specific activity. In this case, it was the reactor oversight process. There was a number of industry representatives, a number of N uh, NRC officials, there were a number of state officials on the panel, and there was a token NGO, a token public member of the public um, serving on that panel to look at how the NRC's pilot reactor oversight process was working. The good news about that panel was that it was a consensus panel, so even the, every member's view had to be reflected in the final outcome. It wasn't a majority-minority report. So when they did the follow-up study, they changed it to a majority-minority point, so it didn't matter what I said anymore. Um, but at least on the initial one, it was a good oversight process. And the reason I think there might be some value in this going forward is if the NRC established a similar panel to look at lessons learned from Fukushima and how they're implementing them, we think it'd be valuable to have public represented on that panel. We'd like to see at least one member from a local group, from a regional group in Region 1, Pilgrim Watch, C10, or somebody. Also Region 2, the Southeast, the West, and the Midwest. The public at the moment doesn't fully trust the NRC for some reason. And it would be good to have public representative, to have the public's concerns brought forth to the NRC and have the NRC's actions or explanations for justifications for whatever they're doing or not doing reported back to the... So I think that partnership would be better than the current system. So that's, there has some value going forward. I'll let Arnie talk about... He, he was the chair of a panel in, at the state level in Vermont that I served on briefly before going to the NRC. Oops, sorry. A little <clears throat> answer. here. The... Um, the other example is uh, what we did in Vermont. Um, the legislature enacted a law and um, uh, empowered five people. One was uh, appointed by the governor, one was appointed by the president pro tem of the state senate, and one by the, um, the, the majority leader of the house. Uh, those three then chose two more people to fulfill a five-person panel. Um, the difference between what we looked at and what Dave looked at is that um, states are not allowed to bump into the NRC's jurisdiction, and we couldn't look at safety. We could look at reliability. So, for instance, the uh, emergency core cooling systems were not a topic that we were allowed to look at, um, but if the testing of the emergency core cooling systems was likely to impact uh, the length of an outage, that became a reliability issue. Um, we issued a report after um, about $9 million worth of work by consultants. I'd like to say that went to me, but it didn't. You know, but they, there were a, a team of consultants brought in to answer uh, a matrix of questions. We had 13 different parameters, and we looked at six different systems, so six by 13. And we had um, problems in 81 different areas that the uh, panel identified. Now, I, I always wondered, uh, rather than suffer the, the, the public relations uh, problems of having outsiders find the, 31, the, the 81 problems, why Entergy didn't do it themselves, um, but they, they, they chose not to. Um, the next year, uh, they didn't quite tell us the truth about an underground pipe. And, that we were reconvened and found another nine problems. So this public oversight group effectively identified 90 problems uh, at, um, at Vermont Yankee. Um, and it will take until at least about 2015 or 2016 till all of those issues are resolved. And of course, the license ends in 2012. So um, uh, we shall see whether the extension occurs or not. But it was... Um, uh, as effective a process as any state has come up with to, uh, to shine the light on the inner workings of a, of a nuclear power plant. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.